In this lesson, I will be talking about atoms and how they are arranged in the periodic table of elements. The website I'll be using is fet.colorado.edu, so that's p-h-e-t dot c-o-l-o-r-a-d-o dot e-d-u. So we go to simulations here, and under simulations, chemistry. And here we go down to a simulation called build an atom. And then press play. And finally, the option on the left here, atom. Now, our starting point is to understand that everything in nature is built from atoms and our combinations of atoms. So over here, we have a table that lists all the types of atoms in nature, starting with hydrogen here, helium and so on. Now this table is called the periodic table of elements and um, hydrogen is the first element. So an element is something in nature that's, <coughs> excuse me, it's a substance in nature that's built from the same type of atom. So hydrogen is the first element, then helium and so on. And in this lesson, we'll be looking into what each atom is made of. So if we come over here and try and build the first atom, which is hydrogen, We've got a kit here which which consists of the building blocks for each of these atoms and the first thing we need is a proton and we need uh, an electron to match that. Now there's the first atom already. So what we've got here is a particle called a proton in the nucleus. So this is the nucleus or the centre of the atom and we've got an electron orbiting it, much like the planets orbit the sun or something like that. It turns out in real life the electron is much smaller than, than the proton. It's about nearly 2,000 times smaller than, than a proton. Uh, so they're not shown to scale here as such. Now, we'll keep a tally up here of our protons and electrons as we go along. So this is the first element. So as you can see, as soon as I built it, hydrogen lights up on the table. So that's a hydrogen atom, one proton and one electron. Now, these have a property called charge also, protons and electrons. The charge of a proton is plus one, and the charge of an electron is minus one. So this just symbolizes the way they interact with each other. Um, when they're isolated, a proton would attract an electron and because they're opposite charges and so on, and protons would normally repel protons because they're the same charge. That's, that's all the charge number means, or the sign. Plus or so if you go over here, you can see that the overall charge at the moment is zero because we've got a plus one in the proton and a minus one on the electron. There's also a thing called mass number. So if you go to mass number, um, it tells you basically the size of the atom. Um, and the, ma the main part of the mass is made of the proton and there's one proton. The electron you can ignore for purposes of mass because it's 2,000 times smaller. So when we're adding up the mass we, units, we tend to ignore it. So we've got one unit of mass so far, and that's just a proton. So that's actually called the mass number, or sometimes it's called the atomic mass. Okay, so now we can move on to the next one, which is um, helium. So as soon as I put in another proton, we now have a different type of atom or a different element, and it's called helium. And you'll see that uh, when I put in the proton here, helium lights up. Now, the problem is it's not a full atom yet, because to be a full atom, the charges overall have to be neutral. We've got two pluses now, two protons and one minus, which is an electron. So we need to balance that with another electron. So I'll put that here. And now it's finally balanced. The overall charge is zero. Whereas when I if I take that away again for a sec, you can see that the overall charge is plus one because it's plus two and minus one, which is plus one overall. So I'll put back that electron again. Also, before we put it back this time, the name has changed, notice up here. It's now called an ion, I-O-N. So an ion is basically when, you're, uh, when you've lost or gained electrons, um, you, you're, you have what's called an ion. So it's not a neutral atom anymore. It's technically called an ion at the moment until the charge balances. So let's put that electron back and it's now an atom again. It's now a neutral atom. Okay, so that's helium. That's the second type of atom you can have. Now onto the third one. Uh, so you go along the rows here and then onto the next row. So you can see why they're arranged like this. They're arranged according to the number of protons. And when you change the number of protons, you actually change the element itself. 
So by putting in another, another proton, it's no longer helium, it's now lithium. So it's, it's, it lights up as lithium over here on the table. And now we'll put in an extra electron to match again. Now you notice something else unusual here. Um, the electron won't go on that first ring or that first shell. It goes on to a second shell. It turns out that the electrons are organized in shells around the nucleus, which is the center here. And you can only have two on the inside shell. That's, that's the maximum limit. And then they start filling the next shell here. So that's why it's gone on to the outside shell. Also, if you turn on this thing down here, it does a stable or unstable indicator. It tells us that at the moment that that atom is unstable. It might be neutral in terms of charge, but it's unstable in terms of the mass. And what you do is you have these, these guys called neutrons, which you can stick in there to stabilize the nucleus. So let's put one of those in there and see what happens. So it's still unstable. We need another one. Still unstable. We need another one again. Now it's finally stable. Now the, the, the word neutron, as, as, as the name indicates, is neutral in terms of charge. There is no charge on a neutron. So the protons are plus one, the electrons are minus one, and the neutrons are zero in terms of charge. So adding these doesn't affect the overall charge. They're just there to stabilize the nucleus. So we now can keep a tally up here. This lithium um, has three protons, three neutrons, and three electrons. The number of protons tells you which atom it is, in this case lithium. And uh, that's also called the atomic number. So the atomic number is the number of the atom, the, which number it is on the list here. Uh, so the protons tells you that number. Uh, when you add the protons and neutrons together, we ignore electrons, as I said, because they're so small, we ignore them in terms of mass. So when you get all the total mass of the atom, protons and neutrons, there's six now altogether, six mass units. So that's called the mass number. So get those two numbers clear, atomic number and mass number. Atomic number is the number of protons only. It's three in this case. The mass number is the total protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Ignoring electrons, you get a mass number of six. Now let's go on to another one. So beryllium is the next one here. Uh, so again, if you stick in an extra proton, that should light up. And of course, we need an extra electron again to balance that out. Now it's unstable, so it needs some more neutrons. So let's stick in some neutrons here. And now it's stable. So it's beryllium, it's a stable, that's a stable beryllium atom now, and it's got uh, an atomic number of four, because it's got four protons, but four and five is nine, so its mass number is nine altogether. And again, the overall charge is zero because the pluses and minuses, the protons and electrons always match. Sometimes you can stick in an extra neutron. It's still beryllium. Um, it's a bit unstable now again. Uh, but that's an isotope. That's what's called an isotope. If you have more neutrons, but it's still the same element or a different number of neutrons, that's called a different isotope of the same element or the same atom. Uh, you can think of an isotope like a flavor or whatever. It's a different flavor or a different... A different um, Type of the same atom. Okay. Now the next thing to talk about, we'll take that neutron out maybe again. Is I suppose what's different about each of these and why they're organised as they are. It turns out well you can see now that going across you're adding a proton each time, so that's why they're organised like that. And um, there's another reason why they're organised this way as well. Um, if you go down this way, so each going across horizontally, um, that's called a period. So that's the um, that's the first period, that's the second one, and so on. Um, but going down horizontally, these are called groups. So they fall into groups naturally as well. And what happens in the groups is each element in that group behaves similarly, um, chemically speaking. So in terms of chemical reactions, all of these um, would behave fairly similar. Um, so hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and so on. Um, these are all highly reactive, it turns out. Um, in, in terms of chemistry, they, they, they react very easily with, with things like water or even air sometimes, or they're, they're highly reactive. Um, the ones at the other end are the opposite. Um, these are what's called the, no, the noble gases, and they're not reactive at all on this end. And um, in between, then you've all sorts of variations. So group one, group two, and we skip all these for the moment, group three, group four, five six and seven and eight so group eight is the most stable 
it turns out that eight electrons on the outside shell is the most stable so let's just build up to eight here we'll build up to we'll say neon for example so let's try and get neon built here so um neon would be let's keep going on with protons for the moment we're on carbon now let's keep going nitrogen lights up on our table now we've got oxygen now we've got um fluorine and now we've got neon finally now that's highly unstable obviously so we need some neutrons to stabilize that so I'll start putting in a few neutrons um how many do we need we need a few more by the looks of things so keep adding it's finally stable okay so at the moment we've got a mass number of 20 so there's 10 neutrons and 10 protons now with electrons on the other hand we need 10 as well because to balance the charge the charge is now six plus six overall so we need six more electrons to balance that out so six more and they go on the second shell because the first shell is full with two so keep adding those now how many is that one two three, i think we've eight now have we so yeah now it's a neutral atom so the number of electrons now matches the proton so we're down to a net charge of zero now it turns out that eight is very stable and um eight electrons on the outside shell is very stable and very safe so um what tends to happen is if they're missing an electron just say something was missing an electron like fluorine for example let's take away an electron here and let's take away a proton well now it's fluorine it turns out that eight is the most stable configuration and they'll always try and get eight if they can so fluorine that's missing one will try and react with something else to gain one basically to gain an electron to, to complete the number eight on that shell so if you take something like for example lithium that has only one electron on the outside shell um the lithium is one and fluorine's eight set fluorine seven sorry will make a perfect eight and they will get together uh to they will react together very naturally because of that and that's the reason also that on the in group eight over here that they're very safe they're very stable helium i mean helium is so stable you can actually put it in balloons at, for children's parties and so on the balloon it, it's lighter than air so it, it rises with the balloon um you can even inhale it and it can change your voice to a squeaky voice that's how safe helium is so all these are very neon as in, as in neon lights argon is used in light bulbs all of these over here are totally safe because they've got eight electrons on the outside shell and atoms like that that's a stable configuration for atoms uh, so they're for that reason they're called the noble gases noble means i suppose they're aloof they won't mix with anybody else they're quite happy on their own and um all of these have different names so for example um group seven are called the halogens um so they're they're quite reactive and uh group one are called the alkalis so they're, they, they, that's for a further lesson we'll be discussing how they get together in compounds and so on in a further lesson but that's the end of today's lesson the lesson on the different types of atoms or the different elements